Happy Sabbath, everyone. Um, wave, can I have a wave? You guys can hear me? Um, okay, so um, I'd like to thank the Lord for bringing us all here this afternoon to end our Sabbath day. And I'd like, also like to greet the people from the North Zone and people from the South Zone and the South Zone and the Eastern and also the Midlands, and I'd like to uh, greet you all here in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, and I'd also like to greet our visitors and those that will be watching on the Facebook Live, and and also um, uh, Mossy in Fiji, and the family. We'd like to greet you here. Um, and um, before we, before Saki gives us a word of prayer, can we please, will please sing a song? So our hymnal is uh, uh, 350 eh? from the SDA hymnal. 350. For can we please stand up as we sing this thing now? <laughs>
Allah has been for us, as we father for guiding us to employ love. Thank you, Lord, for bringing us together for this Zoom meeting and that we're so to be ending with us, Lord. Um, we pray that the Holy Spirit would be amongst us and to give us uh, in all of our spirit, Lord. We also um, ask that you be with the speaker who will be speaking tonight and that the word will have an impact on our lives. We also pray for those watching from Facebook Live that they'll be touched by this message and also for all the guests that have come and joined us today, Lord. Thank you for our love and grace. In Jesus' precious and mighty name we pray. Amen. 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 Naka Sasilia Satu Tameyahu and Lady Peggy Tango to Bana Kirituko Naga. Thank you. Happy Sabbath, everyone. If you can hear me, please wave so I can uh, be so sure that I am actually engaging today instead of talking to myself. Um, so thank you very much, children. Thank you very much to all the parents. Thank you to all the families. Thank you to everyone that are here this wonderful evening of the um, end of Sabbath service for us uh, today. Uh, here in the UK and uh, for those that are already been greeted from uh, Peter this uh, evening. Uh, Peter, I would like to also take this time to uh, say our, uh, our thank you for your very warm welcome uh, as we come together this, uh, on this platform for the end of Sabbath uh, service. Okay, so um, I believe the children probably, uh, yes, so I'll, we've got a lot of children here as well today. <clears throat> so the children, uh, pretty much for the adults to be aware of, the children uh, or the youth are sort of looking forward to something that I've already told them that I will introduce to them this evening. So it will more like a lesson, but at the same time we can uh, learn from a few uh, instruction learn from a few key points that is not only applicable to the children to ourselves as well yeah I know that um, maybe most of us went through the process or went through the uh, uh, their time or uh, in the church uh, going through the youth and they probably have heard of this before but we'll we'll get to that we'll get to that okay so uh, before we carry on let us bow our heads and pray the Samashmanda. Let's bow our heads and pray. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you once again, Lord, for this wonderful opportunity that you have brought us together to come in one accord to worship you on the end of Sabbath. Lord, we ask your Holy Spirit to guide us, lead us, open our hearts as we learn from you. In the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> okay, so um, like I was saying earlier uh, to, the, to the parents, uh, it's, it's something that I've already children to look forward to this evening or to our youth. Um, I'll try and be uh, interactive as much as possible, but we will see as we go on. I've got a few questions first. There's about six questions I'll ask first before we go into it. So put your hands up if you like reading. Put your hands up if you like reading. <clears throat> if you like reading, don't be shy. Uh, if you like reading, you can put your hands up. If you don't like reading, don't be shy as well. You don't have to put your hands up. <laughs> okay, I can see a few hands there. Yeah, um, I can be honest as well. Children, when I was young, I did not have this uh, opportunity to read a lot. So I did not uh, have that say to say that I like it. So I did not like it at the start to read uh, because maybe because I was not exposed to it a lot. Yeah. 
So what type of books, for those that put their hands up, what types of books do you like reading or do you enjoy reading? Does it have to be a big book? Does it have to be a short book, uh, uh, short stories? You can unmute and, and, uh, and um, answer the question as well, please. Sure. Sorry? Sure. Short book, yeah? So we, uh, yeah, anybody else got any different answer? Mm -hmm. David Williams. You have, you have to speak loud, I can't hear you, sorry. The book's name. Okay, yeah, depending on the book's name. Thank you, thank you. Um, but what advice for those of us that like reading, there's only a few of um, seeing there's only a few of us answering the question, what advice would we tell those who doesn't like reading? You know, imagine that we are a person who's gonna be advertising books and we are trying to make people read books. What would you say to those people that doesn't like reading? What advice you would give them? Give it a go. Give it a go, yes. Don't judge Don't the book judge by the, the cover. Book. Right, yeah, that's a very good saying as well. Don't judge the book by the cover, yeah? Give it a go. Some of us might not like it, but we'll find out later. Actually, it is good, it is good to read. It will help us, <clears throat> I mean, especially reading English books for those of us that came across and doesn't speak English back home um, a lot. Like, for example, myself, I did not learn a lot of English, but then I learned it from living with my comrades and also reading books. Now I'm still learning, but hopefully it will get better uh, as, as my days and years goes by. Okay, so there's those, we can give them some advice. It will improve your English. All right, thank you. Thank you very much, sister. Yeah, it will improve your English. Um, that is a good advice to, uh, to some of our friends that probably yeah. wants to learn English, yeah. Somebody Try to give them an insight about the content of the book. Right, yeah. Sort of, you need to understand that book as well in order for you to what? To tell them about the book. Yeah, yeah. Um, topic like books that you that will interest the person. Yeah, so, so even, even though the, the, the book maybe seem so hard to read, some of us might say, I, I, I don't like reading because it's boring, yeah? That's probably the word that some of us might use. But at the same time, if we put it across in a very um, beautiful way, they will give it a go, yeah? Because everyone is different. Everyone is unique as they are. Yeah? And we just don't know the contents of the book unless we open the book, yeah? Like uh, what uh, Auntie Lou is saying there, don't judge the book by, by the cover. So this evening, we will be reading together as I share this uh, PowerPoint. So apologies, we will be reading together, but no apologies because it's good for us. It is good for us, yeah? Um, bear with me, let me share this. Before I share this, I'll ask another question. So I said I had six questions. There's only about three that I said there. So Paul, this is my last question. So it's not six, it's only four. Can anyone, um, does anyone remember a book that, or does anyone remember something that stands, or, or what does DIA stands for? DIA stands for. So this is more for the adults because uh, the youth or the young children, the young adults uh, amongst us probably never heard of it. Anyone? DIA. Okay, let me share it for us. What are we, what are we looking at? So I've gave it away already. Okay, what are we looking at? DIA, what does it stand for? Anyone? Disciples in action. Disciples in action, okay? So this is what we're looking at today. Like I said, we'll be reading the book together. As we look at this book, it says, a disciple is one who responds in faith and obedience to the gracious call of Christ 
to follow him. Okay? That is, the, that, that is what we are reading right now. That a disciple is one who responds in faith and obedience to the gracious call of Christ to follow him. I said from the start to the children or to the young adults that we will be introduced to this disciple in action. That's why I was encouraging all of you to come in. But also, not only that this is applicable to the young adults that are here, I believe, or we can all agree, this is applicable to all of us. Why? Because we are all under this title, disciples in action. Those who respond in faith and obedience to the, to the gracious call to Christ to follow him. And what I've highlighted, or what we can see in the next line, it says, discipleship is not something we do alone, only on Sabbath or during a seminar. Yeah? So let's remember that. What else does he say? Let me read this Bible verse for us. Luke chapter 14. So we're reading, all right, we're diverting the book now. We're reading another book. It's called the Bible. Luke 14, 26. Let me read it for us. Luke 14, 26. And it says, if any man come to me and hate not his father and mother and wife and children and brethren and sister here and his own life, also he cannot be my disciple. Straight away, we are getting some important points from the Bible of what it is as a disciple. What does it mean as a disciple? Yeah? What does it mean for you and me to be a disciple? Disciple of who? Definitely the disciple of Jesus Christ, the disciple of God. And it says in 27, and whosoever doeth not bear his cross and come after me cannot be my disciple. And then also at the, at the end, where well, verse 33 says, so likewise, he be of you that forsaketh not all that he hath, he cannot be my disciple. So straight away, as we're reading this book of DIA, Disciples in Action, we can come to terms that this word disciple means that it is not me anymore, but it is the calling that we are called to, to be part of. Yeah? And what is that? And it is responding in faith and obedience to the gracious call of Christ to follow him. So it's all about following our Savior, Jesus Christ. Yeah? And what else is saying that? Discipleship is about growing spiritually closer to God, self, and others daily, forever. Children, this is our message today. Yeah? Families, this is our message today. That's it. That is our message. And uh, the rest, yes, we'll try and, uh, and, and learn more from it, but please do not forget it. Do not forget this. This is our message, that we should be growing spiritually. What else? Closer to God. What else? Self and others. And right at the end there, what does he say? Daily, forever. Yeah? This is not a commitment of alone, something we do alone, only on Sabbath or during a seminar. This is daily and forever. Isn't that good news? It is a good book, isn't it, children? Yeah? We're, st we're just starting of it now. We're just opening the cover, and then we'll start reading away. Let's look at the introduction. Now it came to pass, as he was praying in the certain place, when he sees that one of his disciples said to him, Lord, teach us to pray, as John also taught his disciples. Yeah? We can see that what does he say? Teach us to pray. So at the same time, we as disciples need some what? We need some teaching. Yeah? We also need some teaching. Yeah? We also need some teaching. It's often believed that being a disciple of Jesus is a what? Is an automatic event. Once you've accepted Jesus as your Lord and Savior, all you have to do is Read the Bible and pray, and all will be well. Of course, those are imperative to the Christian journey. But how do we read the Bible? How do we pray? Yeah, These questions will be answering some of them, but we won't be answering all of them. We're only going to look at a, a, a few key points tonight because of, of time as well. But 
let's 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 look at the questions and try and reflect it and answer it yourself as well. How do you read the Bible? Is important. If I don't know, I have to go and ask. How do we pray? If I don't know, I have to go and ask. How do we best open our hearts and minds so that the Holy Spirit can do His work in us? And that's what disciples in action is all about. Let's go on. Okay. So DIA is is built on the together growing fruitful disciples framework. Yeah. We've uh, established now that working or, or, or this calling of following Jesus Christ is a work of what? Is a work of a group that grows together frame, uh, uh, that grows together for this calling of what we are to be accomplice as we, as we move forward as a disciple. And he says that together growing fruitful disciples framework. Yeah? So this framework is foundation of, of discipleship model. What does it do? It's designed to help us to think more clearly and deeply about the spiritual growth and maturity of ourselves and others as disciples of Jesus Christ. And it identifies four growth processes around which we believe that disciples journey occurs. Let's look at it. Okay, connecting, understanding, ministering, equipping. How does it, uh, how does it uh, elaborate on those, uh, on those four growth processes? As it says right before us on the, on, on the slide, it says connecting. What is connecting? Is growing in a relationship with God, others, and self. What is understanding? Understanding is growing in knowledge of Jesus and his teachings. What is ministering? Growing in participation of God's mission of revelation, reconciliation, and restoration. What is the last one, the fourth one? Equipping. Growing in the body of Christ by walking alongside other disciples in order to support, nurture, and strengthen in love. Yeah? So those are the key or, or, the, or the four growth process around which we believe that disciples' journey occurs. We connect, we understood, we ministered, and we are equipped. And those four things you can see that it is underlined right next to it is what? Is growing. So the first step is not the last step. The first step is the what? Is the first step. What comes after that? More steps to go forever. Yeah? So growing in all these four. Connecting with God. Understanding knowledge of Jesus and his teachings. Ministering yeah? and, uh, 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 by, by partaking, by getting involved, by doing something. Ministering, participation is, is something that we need to, if you, if you are not taking part on something and uh, most of us are not aware that you're not taking part, put your hands up and say, I haven't took part. Can I do something, please? Why? Because I want to be a DIA. Yeah? I want to be a DIA. So it is a work that all of us can do together and all of us has to, uh, has to be aware of. Equipping again is equipping by what? By the body of Christ, by walking alongside other disciples. There's a Bible verse that says, it's better to be two than one. Why is that? Because when one falls, there's another one that what? To lift him up. And this is a beautiful picture that we can picture tonight as we look forward to the week before us. We have been so blessed through this Sabbath day. From the starting of Sabbath, from the, begin, uh, from the beginning of Sabbath, our prayer uh, session in, in the morning, and also the uh, Sabbath school, the divine service, and the rest of the program, the, the personal ministry program, the, uh, what else, the, the, the prayer service in the in after lunch, the Bible study as well. And now we are here looking forward to, to a new week, and we are so blessed because we are getting reminded 
about a very, very important, uh, a very, very important role that you and me are called upon to, that we are called upon by our heavenly father in heaven. Isn't it? That's good news. Okay, all four process in this model are centered on and accomplished through the ministry of the Holy Spirit. We will agree to this all the time, yeah? Because we cannot do it on our own. Yes, we've got one another. Yes, we've established the four process that we need as a discipleship, but at the same time, we need the power, we need the ministry of the Holy Spirit. What does the Holy Spirit do? John 14, 26. Can I ask one of the children to read it, please? Uh, I'll, I'll actually say what, uh, can I ask? Can I ask Saki to read that, please? John 14, 26. But the, com but the Comforter, which is the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, he shall teach you all the things and bring all the things to your remembrance, whatsoever I have said unto you. Amen. Yeah? What does the Holy, the Holy Spirit does? He is the Comforter, which is the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name. Jesus was reminding his disciples, you know, there is something else we, I'm going to give you. There's something else that's going to come after me. And what is that? The Holy Spirit that we are talking about that will help us on our call for DIA. What will he do? He will teach you and me all things. He will bring all things to your remembrance. Children, I had hard times remembering things when I go to school. When I go and sit down for my exam, I'm thinking, what did I learn from the first term of this year? This is the third term of the year and I'm sitting on the final exam. I can't remember it. My brain is not working as, as good as that. Children, this is good news. Family, this is good news. Why? Because the Holy Spirit will give that remembrance. Whatsoever I have said unto you. He will what? He will teach. And he will bring all things to our remembrance. So separating these processes may seem artificial, but it does allow us to bring clarity to vital aspects of discipleships that might otherwise be overlooked. In this model, commitments for the growing Christian are articulated for each of the individual processes. With each process, commitments are further divided into key aspects of spiritual growth called indicators. Yeah? These indicators represents behaviors through which by the power of the Holy Spirit, we can grow and mature as disciples of Jesus Christ. Yeah? So we are so thankful. Why? Because the Holy Spirit will help us to see some indicators of the things that we come across in our lives, to see indicators of what things that you and me are good at in the army, in the army, there is a word that we always use, it's called a combat indicator. When we talk about combat indicator, what does that mean? It means that when we are walking in this, probably in this street where, uh, where um, there is different uh, threats on that street, we don't know, why? Because we only have two eyes. But what we can use is combat indicators when we see things that are doing that, 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 that are not normal, or when we see body language, or when we see some marking on the walls or marking on the road, yeah? Those are the things that can help us to, uh, to confront or uh, to sort of uh, uh, navigate ourselves through this, this, this road or this, this farm, yeah? But we are, as we look at this, as we look at our book that we are reading today, it says that growing Christian yeah? With each process commitment are further divided into key aspects of um, uh, uh, growth call indicators. So these indicators, behaviors, through which by the power of the Holy Spirit, we can grow and mature as disciples of Jesus Christ. So in our daily walk, the Holy Spirit will give us some indicators. Yeah? He can remind you to you or uh, children, you are actually good at this. Yeah? You've done that. So remember that. You can still do that 
in the what? In the DIA. They all represent a lifetime of following Jesus. So do not, do not forget that. Yeah? Because sometimes we are so um, we are so um, blinded by thinking of the doing something else that that are further away from us. No, God has given you some things to start with. When you grab hold of those things, then you will be able to uh, be able to see other indicators that God will bless you with, or the Holy Spirit will guide you to as you go on this walk. Yes, D I A. Let's go on. Spiritual, spiritual mentors, yeah. Spiritual mentors. What else is 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 in this book here? What else is in this book here? What else is there? Spiritual mentors, yeah, or partners, companions are crucial in our discipleship journey. As revealed in the equipped aspect of this model, actually the support, nurture, and strengthening derived from our walking alongside each other in this journey is foundational. Yeah, we've sort of remember that we need we need someone. We need someone to walk with. So as a, as, as, a, as, a, as a church, as a family, um, we need a spiritual mentors. Yeah? We need partners, we need companions. We are so thankful that we are already practicing it in some ways where I can remember the, the moms are, 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 are praying, praying so much about us. How are they doing it? They're doing it in partners, in pairs. Why is that important? as we are learning today. We are looking out for one another and we are working for something bigger than just the two of us, yeah? Spiritual mentors. Thus you'll find in the DIA that each participant is to be assigned a mentor right from the start, yeah? Most of the time we do not know where to start. So we are so blessed that we are here as a family. We can start with our family. We can start with our mom and dad children. There will come a time we will what? We will let you go out from our sack or from our home. But when you are out there on your own, you still need someone that will mentor you as you are out there on your own as well. Yeah? Spiritual mentors, very, very practical and important as well. So whether the person is much older or just little, the mentor should be someone who the participant can trust and look as the role model for learning how to live the Christian life. Yeah, live a Christian life. There's a Bible verse there that we're gonna read. Okay, there's a Bible verse there that we're gonna read. But um, let me read it for us. Matthew chapter 18. Matthew chapter 18, verse one to six. Matthew 18, verse one to six. Uh, I want us to just um, sort of highlight something from here. Because as we look at the type of person, he says that whether the person is much older or just a little, the mentor should be someone who the participant can trust and look to as a role model for learning how to live the Christian life. Yeah? Not only that a DIA or as a discipleship or as a young disciple, as we are growing, is important, but it's also important that our spiritual mentors are, are the right person that will, that will do their work as they are called upon as well. Yeah? Let's look at this Bible verse here. Chapter 18 of the Matthew, there you will see that uh, the disciples, I'll try and speak about it now. The disciples were talking about, you know, they were, they've been, they've been uh, asking, you know, who's going to be the greatest? Who's going to be the greatest? Uh, uh, in, in, your, in, your, in, your, in your kingdom, Lord, yeah? as they speak to Jesus. But let's look at what it says in, 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 in the Bible. I'm reading from the, from the King James Version. And it says, And the same time came the disciples unto Jesus, saying, Who is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven? And Jesus called a little child unto him, and set him in the midst of them. And verily, and said, Verily I say unto you, except he be converted and become as a little children, he shall not enter 
into the kingdom of heaven. Whoso therefore shall humble himself as this little child, the same is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven. And whoso shall receive one such little child in my name, receiveth me. Okay? The verse six where I'm gonna try and focus on. But we can, uh, we, we, we can understand, we can clearly see there what Jesus is trying to tell the disciples. Yeah? He's trying to tell the disciples uh, if we think about that time in the in the Jew sort of culture, you know, the children was not something that they looked up to. Yeah, the children was not something that they uh, served. Yeah, but the children is someone who just who just they yeah, are part of the community. Yeah, but Jesus brought the children and tell them, this is the kingdom of God. It's like these children. Why? Because they are so humble. Why? They are content with what they have at that time. Yeah. What else? What else? Uh, what was I trying to speak? What was I trying to focus on as we look at verse 6? It says, But whoso shall offend one of these little ones which believe in me, it were better for him that a mild, milestone were hanged about his neck and that he were drown in the depth of the sea. It's quite a, um, a very disturbing picture there. But Jesus was telling the disciples, and it's speaking to us as well as we read this book today. As we looked at spiritual mentors, so some of us will be spiritual mentors, okay, can be spiritual mentors as we look at our children, as we look at our youth, as we progress on as a church. It is quite important. Why? Because if we lead the young generation, if we lead our young children, where? Somewhere else that is not according to the word of God. It says that, who shall offend one of these little ones which believe in me, yeah, it were better for him to, uh, to for him that a mile, a millstone were hanged about his neck and that were drowned in the depth of the sea. Yeah? That is a punishment that the Romans normally does, not the Jews, the Romans. And it's something that we can see that, right, Jesus, this is something that is really, really important for Jesus. So it should be so important as well for us as what? As spiritual mentors. Okay? Some qualities of a, of a mentor should include what? A willingness to share his or walk with God. Yeah? A sincerity and honesty in sharing their faith stories. Openness in communication. A willingness to provide support, encouragement by listening and giving honest feedback without trying to force change. Spiritual accountability is not about giving up control. It is about allowing another person to help us accomplish spiritual goals that we've set ourselves. Look at this Bible verse, Luke chapter 21. Luke chapter 21. Can I ask Afu to read it for us, please? Luke 21, 15. Can I ask, uh, are you all seeing the, the PowerPoint clearly, or is it a bit blurred? Oh, we can see it clearly. Okay. Okay, I'll ask after to read uh, Luke 21, 15, please. For I will give you a mouth and wisdom which all your adversaries will not be able to contradict or resist. Okay, so I think today on the Bible, uh, Bible study today, we've already read this. but. This is, this, is, uh, this is something that should give you and me, this Bible should give you and me what? A peaceful heart. That what is, what, 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 what should we do? We should just say, yes, God use me as a mentor, as a DIA, as whatever you want me to be. Why? Because his word that we are reading here, he says, for I will give you all mouth and wisdom which all your adversaries shall not be able to gainsay nor resist. There's a word came there, adversaries. I think we all understood this because we are in a, we are in a battleground. Yeah? We are in a war between good and evil, between the kingdom of God and who else? And Satan, who is against the kingdom of um, heaven, uh, 
uh, who was against the word of Jesus, who was against us to be part of the part of the DIA. But this would give us a peaceful heart as we look at this Bible verse in Luke 21, 15. We'll go forward. So another element of growing is that of assessment. It answers the question, how am I doing? Of course, each person's journey is unique. The work of the Holy Spirit cannot be repl uh, replicated in a lab as we do vitamins and pharma uh, tuticles. Yeah? The wind, the Bible says in John 3, 8, the wind blows where it wishes and you hear the sound of it, but cannot tell where it comes from and where it goes. So is everyone who is born of the spirit. Yeah? So however it is possible to assess the direction of one's life. So the scripture encourages us to what? To work out our salvation with fear and trembling. For it is God who works in you both to will and to do his what? And to do his good pleasure. Yeah? And that is in Philippians 2, 12 and 13. So while it is God's work in us through his spirit, the DIA is an excellent tool to help young people experience God's work in their lives and to assist them in trusting him to do that work. Not only I would suggest it to the young people, I would suggest it to everyone. I will put this book in our chat, uh, on our chat uh, space after this. Yeah, but let's move forward. We are nearly there. So developing a dynamic, deepening love relationship with God, you or me or I, communion with God regularly through his word, prayer and other Christian disciples. Yeah? So basically, we are just reminding ourselves again now what we have been talking about. Yeah? Is, is going, is going, is reminding, remind and revise. Yeah? Repeat and enlarge. Yeah? That is how we can become better because we've learned that we need to what? We need to grow daily and for the rest of our lives. Yeah? Participating with other believers is worshiping God on Sabbath at other, and, other, uh, and at other times. Worshiping God daily as a living sacrifice by choosing his will over my will. Yeah? Romans 12, 1, 2, and Colossians 3, 17. When you have time, you can go and read that. It talks about our self as a, as a self-sacrifice. Paying attention to what God is doing and praising him for his love and faithfulness. Okay, so God seeks a dynamic system, relationship with you. Okay, you probably can uh, guess right now what is that relationship that, how can we have this dynamic relationship? There's a lot, but there's one that we will uh, only look at today. God is in love with you. Over and over again in the Bible, God reminds you that you are the child that is desperately sick and intimate growing relationship with you. A dynamic relationship with God starts with knowing that God for reasons we will never fully understand, loves you beyond your wildest imagination. His love is beyond your imagination. You would not understand it. Yeah? As a response to God's love, we can connect with him and allow him to grow in and through us. Right? This is what I'm talking about. Sabbath, strengthening your connection. Yeah? So this is uh, one of the uh, strengthening or one of the connection, one of the... Uh, a dynamic relationship that we can practice or we can look forward to as we learn from the Bible, the Sabbath. Yeah? So Sabbath is a very vital point. Connection with God um, uh, is, is the Sabbath. Sabbath reminds us to reflect our priorities. It's not about one day separate than living another day six like other person. It's about strengthening and re-energizing our connection with God and his eternal values. So our Sabbath experience can change the way we worship, the way we interact with others, and strengthen our relationship with God. Okay? So this is quite important. So we are so blessed. We are so thankful that we are here as a family at the end of the Sabbath. We have been experiencing the Sabbath together. And it is a, and it is a very happy Sabbath day. Isn't it? Yeah? So strengthen your connection. Um, what does he say there? Sabbath is designed for us to take a break from time, money, consumerism traps. It reminds us that we are created for eternity, that the life is not about the abundance of our things, 
Rather, life is about dynamically connecting with God and people. Sabbath gives us a break from the things that can clutter up the rest of our lives and provides a great opportunity to spend time worshiping, connecting, serving, growing, and sharing. Boy, I don't know what else can we ask for. Strengthening our connection with our Heavenly Father on the Sabbath day. How? Spending time worshiping, connecting, serving, growing, and sharing. The questions are there, but you can answer it. Yeah? Why do you think God invented the idea of Sabbath? Why do you think it's important to take a break from time, money, and consumerism? How can you make your Sabbath experience personal? We can answer that as we look forward to the new week or as we look forward to the new Sabbath. The way you connect most deeply with God and just how God grows you will be unique to you. He made you that way. By looking at various characters in the scriptures, we see that people connect with God in different ways. There is a lot of uh, uh, characters that we see in the Bible. Some people feel deeply connected to God through learning intellectually about him. Or others is primarily through worship, serving, nature, relationship, or contemplation, reflection. Whatever it is, take a step on it. Why is that? Because it will grow. It will definitely grow from there. All of these ways of connecting are important and part of a balanced, growing relationship with God. However, you will more naturally connect through some of these ways than others. Boy, really that. I think there's another three left short uh, slides. So your connection is unique. Remember that everyone is wired differently. Together, we can learn from one another and stretch our experience of connection or connecting with God. Can you think of a time when you felt particularly close to God? What factors do you think shape this closeness? What Christian disciplines have you tried and what made them work or not work? What are you best or what are you best able to hear God communicating with you? These are all personal questions that we can also ask ourselves as we take part as we be part of the DIA, yeah? Sorry, we are on our last slide now, yeah? As we part to our DIA. You'll see the slide, this is the same from the start, yeah? So what is DIA? Disciples in action. We look forward to a new week that we will be part of this group called the DIA, Disciples in Action. Disciple that will grow spiritually, closer to God, self and others, daily forever. Yeah, daily forever. Remember children, remember family, we are called for this. So let's not, let's not put a blind eye on it and say, Oh, was that something I was supposed to do? It is clear. It is right before us. It is in his word. Yeah? And it's there. Those two pictures remind us as well that we are what? We are the salt. What else is there? The light. We are in this dark world and they're in need of light. So for all of us, disciples in action, as we look forward to the new week, let's take part as take it as our response, as our respond in faith and obedience to the gracious call of Christ to follow him. Amen. May God bless us all. So I want to thank uh, Suafu's dad for the lovely message that he has given us this afternoon. Uh, disciple in action. So my family, we have a special number that we want to sing for us this afternoon before I give it back to uh, Afus there to close our closing Sabbath with a prayer. Uh, the message is the power of prayer. So uh, when we uh, call ourselves Christians uh, and we give our life to Jesus, Jesus is always remembering us in his prayer. Yeah, so Gangan Sere it's in Fijian. Uh do and Nanumikin Dorito no Nangangali Masu every time. 
no one is around with you, sir. So we hope that you will enjoy the song this afternoon. Uh, if you can understand the language in Fijian, I hope that you, the melody will bring happiness and joy to everyone's heart uh, this afternoon. Good luck. Father, 
We are so thankful, Lord, that we have come to the end of the Sabbath, that you are looking forward to a new week. And Lord, we are so blessed that you have given us the bread of life throughout your Sabbath day, Lord, from the starting of the Sabbath to the end of the Sabbath, Lord. Lord, we are so thankful that the double portion is enough for us and is overflow as well from us. We are so thankful, Lord, that the guidance of your Holy Spirit will help us as we look forward to the week before us, that we will not only think about ourselves, that we will always think about others, that we'll always think about Jesus Christ, who has died for all of our sins, who has came to this earth and show us the way, the truth, and the life. And we can also be part of his ministry here on earth, Lord. As we are living in the last days, Lord, we thank you that he is in the most holy place, pleading and praying on our behalf as well, as we are working here for the Great Commission. Lord, that you will always be glorified in the name of your son. And Lord, thank you for all the families that are here. Thank you for all the children. Thank you that you will bless each and every one and everyone that are listening and that are watching, Lord, as we look forward to the new week. Thank you for everything that you have prepared for us, that we will be part of your disciples in action. In the name of your son, Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Amen. Blessed week. Yes, indeed. my He's gonna do it. Hello, I'm going to talk to you. Hello, I'm going to talk to you. Hello, I'm going to talk to you.